you stop Saps, that. Beat the fuck up. Saps, <laughs> fucking Saps, how dare you oversleep? What the hell, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. When you what you're oversleep about. from my streams, it makes me feel small. No. <laughs> well, look at it this way. I now have ice cream. Well, that is. Oh, that right, is but that's not. That's fair. Okay. This is no, just a continuation point. of last stream, isn't it? It, listen, which really? it, it's been a while since our last Ace Attorney it stream. It's been a whole so long. It's been 24 mm -hmm. hours, I counted. Someone unmutes and immediately begins crinkling things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ain't it the way? So anyway, um, a, a murder happened. A, a nice lady was impaled very gruesomely. Did not enjoy mm -hmm. that. Um, Pearl is missing. Maya's Pearl. lost somewhere across the bridge. Per uh, Phoenix is in the hospital. It's awful. We are, we are at Larry's there. Larry is there. <laughs> Larry is there. Terrible. Oh yeah. Every yeah. Everything's yeah, terrible. Larry. And you. Oh. What is your deal? I Even I don't know. <laughs> ah, Mr. Edgeworth. I came back because I need to ask you a few more questions, if you don't mind. But... I... I've already told you everything that I... Iris, please remember. I'm on your side. You can tell me anything. Y yes Thank you. Oh, we got some sad music. Face I will. Do it. I just finished speaking with the head nun of Hazakura Temple. She testified very clearly as to what happened. She said she saw you stab Ms. Elise Dunlom with a sword. And one other thing. She said that when Maya Fei began her training at the Inner Temple, you were there as well. When I spoke with you last, you claimed that you never went to the Inner Temple. And yet, Sister Bikini says that she met with you at the Inner Temple that very night. But, but I... I didn't go there! I didn't go to the Inner Temple that last night! Hmm. It looks like she's unwilling to tell me the whole truth. Wonder if I'll find the answers I'm looking for if I break those psycho locks? Ah, uh, is it time? I do Let's like do that he calls them psycho locks. Yeah. <laughs> Get a very rushed explanation from Nick. Take that! Take that! Oh. Oh. We've got two locks. Oh, that's right. Nick had something with five locks on her. Yeah, that oh, was. Yeah. Do, do, do you know me from somewhere else or something? Yeah. Okay. Girl's covered in psycho locks. Since I've been handed this case, it is my duty to dig up all the answers. Understand? Yes, sir. The smallest flame, and somehow- Oh, we, we've heard this. There's a court thing happening over and over again. We need a refresher, it's been so long. Oh, fine. <laughs> I don't I remember. Is this what frightened you so people? much you couldn't even leave your own room? Okay, so why was she scared to leave her room? I'm looking. Or the blackmail letter that she received. Oh, that. Yeah, Probably. you know what? That's actually better. I think almost here to make ten. Make sure you come, unless you want your secret to be exposed. The oh, thought occurred would... to me. <laughs> Sorry, what? That would incentivize her to leave her room, though. Unless, well, immediately. I can see. At... Wait. I can see I... why this would pull you out of your room and also scare you into only. Staying in your room. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I was like, so. oh, I don't want any part of this. Um, Heavenly Hall was the rundown shack. That's right. Yes. The one that we have. The one that we haven't seen. Um. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Oh. oh. I found this in the main hall. It is, it is addressed to you. If you want snuggles, you have to sit in my lap. That's the deal here. That's that's <laughs> the rule around here too. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Well, Iris? Why? Why are you glaring at me like that? You were scared of the blackmailer who wrote this to you, isn't that correct? <laughs> was it the evidence or the power of my glare that broke that lock? Oh well, don't suppose it matters either way. But Mr. Hedgeworth. Yes? I thought that letter was just someone playing a prank on me. A prank? And that's why you just screamed like that when he asked you about it, huh? Well, yes. After all, even if I did have a secret, there's no one to tell it or tell it to that would cause me any grief. Hmm. I wonder about that. Sister Bikini is like a mother to me. I would never hide anything from her. No, you may not have anything to hide under normal circumstances. However, last night was different. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact nature of your secret yet. However, whatever it is, there was one person you didn't want your secret told to. That's... Phoenix? Nick? Nicholas? Nickman? The lady... Nicholas Wright? Her? Tricky Nicky? <laughs> Nick Nack Doesn't Nick already know? Icky Nicky. Um, no. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> really? You mean something to write, it seems. And I can tell he holds a special place in your heart as well. Oh, come on. That's, that's why you didn't want him, of all people, to know your deep, dark secret. Well, what do you have to say? I should have expected as much. Especially from a friend of his. I know that Nick was in a rush earlier, but it feels like he should have shared more details with Edgeworth. Yeah. Great. Maybe it was the drugs. Hmm. He was on a lot After of painkillers. After dinner, this letter was waiting for me in my room. As I said, I was frightened by it. What is this heavenly hall the letter mentions? It's a small mountain shack at the base of Dusky Bridge. A small shack, huh? It's more like a broken down shack that no one would ever want to go near. Hmm. Where is it on this map? Oh, hi. To get there, you must follow a small path down from Dusky Bridge. Uh, okay. Chad has a point. Edgeworth should recognize Dahlia Hawthorne, at least, in Iris. Yeah. The reality is, I had to get to the Inner Temple. Or, to get to the Inner Temple, I had no choice but to cross that bridge. But the thought that such a terrible criminal could be lurking in Heavenly Hall... I was so scared by the whole affair that I didn't even want to think about it. So this is the secret that you locked away in your heart? Yes. It looks as though I may have to visit this heavenly hall now. Maybe I'll find some sign of our mystery blackmailer. In any case, you still claim to have never left your room last night. Yes, that's exactly right. The trial starts tomorrow. I promise you, I will win. I'm going to win that you and Phoenix Wright can see each other again. But when I do, you must promise me that you will tell him your secret. But it's pointless. Why would you say that? I may know who Phoenix Wright is, but he has no idea who I am. Mm -hmm. Creepy. Mm -hmm. I 
I guess. Uh, yeah. Oh, Heavenly Hall. Oh, we could just go down here now? Yeah, it's on our map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Anyways, yeah. I have my theories oh, about her. Oh, god but... damn it. Uh... <laughs> 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 Oh, why? Good, uh, typed even out. The, even text. got the flags. Oh God, the flags! I forgot the flags. The flags. Hold on, hold game. on. Uh, hold okay, on. Okay, Navia. Some, got it. Uh, actually, some some good portraits there. There we go. Yeah, they're pretty good. UK, I think it's Ireland, although it's a bit more yellow than orange. I guess the implication is that Larry drew these, huh? I guess so. These portraits, He's... yeah. He's pretty what's, good. What's the white, blue, and red one? Is that that's not France? No, the blue, white, the vertical oh, stripes is. Oh, that's that's, the, that's England. That's England. No, the white, blue, like the horizontal oh, stripes. Oh, that's that's America. That's America. I already missed <laughs> that one. Between Canada and the UK, near the. Oh, I don't know that frame. one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know? Okay. No. <laughs> Greece. Sounds fake. Whoa, uh, not much of a view down here. It's still better than the view we have in the apartment, though. Other ones could be. Someone's here. Hide yourself, detective. Yeah. Boy, I wonder who that is. <laughs> no, what? Why? Why does this always happen? <sighs> Whenever I find a girl I like, they always run away. You think maybe you come on a little bit too strong? No! Larry, don't you have, like, other things to worry about? Like, Nick having almost died? He's fine. He's in the hospital. All his blood's on the inside. He's got bruises, is that what they said? Bruises from falling 40 feet off of that cliff. <laughs> Not a single broken bone. That's remember, what they said. The water Just was dirty. the water was raging, which means that the surface tension was decreased, so the impact wouldn't have been as strong if it was still. From forty feet, though. I mean, the I fall was not as bad as the rocks. We've yeah. never talked about this before, Jay. I mean, look at the left side of the screen. You can see the bridge, and then downstream we have big, ass, big ass rocks. It was the soft water was water. soft. <laughs> <laughs> Soft water. <laughs> okay. Jay, I even chased one of them into Japan. This is gonna be prison, I guess. Go yeah, probably. I'll steal that detective's wallet. That'll get me locked up for sure. You do know we segregate prisons by, right? Nah. Oh, I can't do that. Or someone who looks like he's down on his luck. He's just talking to himself. Shh, be quiet and listen. <laughs> I knew it. I shouldn't have done that. I blew it again. Well, that? What did he do, I wonder? He didn't send that black hey. letter, did he? <laughs> Hey, you, about what you just said. I've got an objection. I'm on the defensive side right now. Hey, Edgy, you dirty rat! Come show you off. I, I, I'm sorry, sir. Before I knew it, I was shouting out objection. And a loud, commanding voice, too. I even pointed with my finger. We've watched too many trials. I'm sorry. Okay, Larry, the jig is up. What have you got to say for yourself? I hate tiny eyes, Larry. <sighs> what is this little shack anyway? Well, I just discovered it here myself yesterday. And why are you down here in the first place? Yeah. Come on, I'm, I'm just an artist who's looking for a great place to sketch. This is a great little place. It's uh, artistic. It's quiet, it's cold, it's got no power, and it looks like it's about to collapse. <laughs> Sounds a lot like my apartment there, pal. 
one thing's for sure. No one is likely to show up and disturb you here. Also, recently I, I saw a picture on the internet of somebody in their apartment and a mushroom was growing out of the wall. Mm. No. The last mushroom was just growing out of a crack in the wall. Did it make they it should deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you something to drink? Like some, some hot water maybe? From where? There. He's getting all buddy buddy on us, sir. Listen to me, Edgy. You gotta do this. You gotta save Iris. And why are you so so sure she's innocent? Because she's cute. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Anyway, I've made up my heart, my mind about it. I'm gonna marry that girl. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Edgeworth is pretending he didn't hear you, so I'm going to ask for him. Have you already asked this girl to marry you? No, not yet, but I can tell how she feels by the look here in her eyes. Big, big eyes. She's got this, I really want to marry this man to carry over this threshold look. What? Mary. What? Yes. I really want this man to carry me over the threshold. Look. <laughs> yeah, Larry. <laughs> you get married and scoop her up and walk through the door. You know you can't afford a house. I've I've, I've got a threshold here. He's got the the heavenly hall. <laughs> yeah, this, this this is it. I'm sure Nick would be surprised. He never imagined I could marry such a beautiful girl like that! Something tells me he would be shocked indeed. That's why I didn't want you to do anything dangerous. I mean, what am I gonna do if she gets hurt? <laughs> yeah. What is this guy trying to say? He lost me about a mile back. If you really want to know the answer to that, we're going to have to drag him onto the witness stand. No! No! <laughs> Come to think of it, you still haven't answered my question. Where were you and what were you doing last night? Ah, man! Don't you have anything else to talk about? I'm on the clock, Larry. So With keep dragging kind of it out. Attitude, Pay by the hour. <laughs> you'll never be a ladies' man like me. I can assure you that's not a problem. Okay! Okay! Chill out with the scary eyes! I got it! If you really want to know, last night... I saw something incredible. Something incredible? Incredible? Oh, shit. It's like 20 of them. Uh, yeah! Yeah, but let's not let's not talk about that now. Let's talk about the good old days. What do you say? Come on, I'll, I'll pour you a nice cup of hot water. Uh, lucky for you, I keep tea with me. <laughs> Why haven't you realized that I absolutely <laughs> despise talking about the good old days, especially with him? I came to an uncomfortable realization that yeah. in the first trial of this game, Phoenix was very Larry and had the Larry beaten out of him by Dahlia. Yeah! Do you think, do you yeah, think you're right. that uh, yeah. Dahlia could fix Larry? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, just, I just think I can fix him, you know? <laughs> no, but... Iris, don't, Does that please. mean that those two were like the best of friends before he met Dahlia? Oh no. Larry beat out of him by Mia. Yeah, the Larry beat out Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yo, yeah. yeah, that that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, it's a combination, I think. Anything well, should we present anything to him? No, Magata? I think we should just go for the Magatama. 
How do you feel about bikini, Larry? That's my, that's my Is mom. this woman your mother? Alright, now, you, now you're going to tell me what you really saw last night. Whoa, you really upset, aren't you, Angie? Oh, okay, okay, I'll talk. Chat's right. I haven't shown anyone my badge yet. <gasps> it's not your badge. That was a bit too easy. Uh, yeah, anyway, it was, it was awesome. I've never seen anything like it. Around 10 o'clock last night, I started thundering. I had been sleeping, so I'm not sure for how long. Suddenly, Zayden! The world in front of me went white! I had been slapped in the face with my old girlfriend, Naomi! And then? And then, it was on fire! The bridge was on fire! Dusky bridge caught on fire? You're saying you saw it with your own eyes. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? I am telling the truth! Hmm. There are still three psycholocks remaining. That means he's still trying to hide something. By the way, Larry. Where were you when you saw this happen? Uh, where, where, where are you saying? What do you mean? And why does this feel so familiar? What do you mean? What do I... Just answer the question. I... I was in my own room. By the main hall. Well, that's what I mean! Oh yeah, Excuse? this is the one that we broke already. As usual, you're as transparent as an empty jelly jar. Problem, I suspect, lies there. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's impossible for you to see the lightning strike bridge from your... From yeah, your... It's, just, it's the map. The map. Yeah, we, we did do this. Mm-hmm. But this we... Yeah, we, we tried to figure out where he was, and we guessed that he was right next to the bridge, but I guess he was down here. Yeah, that yeah, must have I guess needed so. to wait until we ha had this on our map. Take a look. It's a map. It's in a book. Not oh, a book, it's a map. it added to the map! Yeah. The Heavenly yeah, yeah, Hall yeah. was not there last time. Correct. Oh. Yeah, pretty obvious. Mm. Answer is okay. pretty obvious. Heavenly All right. Hall? Well, you were at Heavenly Hall. The place you saw the lightning strike from was naturally Heavenly Hall. What? Why would I be hanging out in this old shack? It's freezing cold. There's no electricity. And I can fall apart in any minute. Very. How do you know that anyway? How do you know there's no electricity? After all, it's not that dark yet. <laughs> In other words, you've just provided evidence to prove my theory. <laughs> my theory that you've at least once in your life visited Heavenly Hall after sunset. I have to admit I'm impressed. Edgy, you're... Uh... Or oh, you're in a totally different league from Nick. <laughs> That's nice. Now tell me. <laughs> what were you doing at this cold little shack last night? Uh, that's what you might call a... Fair decor. What? Oh. I think you mean a fair decor. Could it be you were waiting for someone? Who are you? I believe that last night you were waiting for this person to come meet you. Iris. You think? I wonder what gave it away. <laughs> Bikini. Bikini. Godo. You know what? S Sir not appearing in this case. We don't know what her age is, but whatever it is, she looks good for it. <laughs> Alright. Unless it's two. There's only one person you'd wait for in a horrible place like this, Larry. I told you before, don't call me Larry! The person you were waiting for was... Iris. Oh, I suddenly feel cold all over, <laughs> Edgy. Good one, Dubby. 
<laughs> no doubt because of my chilly glare. So, do you think I've got four... Oh, you think I got the hearts for Sister Iris, huh? You've told us. <laughs> do you think I got evidence? Larry, turn around. You, you've got some... That proves I was waiting for her! Or, or are you just guessing? This is where I draw the line and end this ridiculous little game. Here's uh -huh. the evidence that proves you are waiting for Iris. Just present Larry. <laughs> the evidence is <laughs> your horny you. ass. You. It's got to be this. Evidence? Oh, yeah. You know in jail. Yeah. What are you talking, Larry? If if you sent this, what the fuck were you talking about? What what secret? The secret what? is that you love me. Oh my god, you might be right. Here's your evidence. Uh, <clears throat> big stretch. You caught to this spot with a pathetic blackmail letter. Oh, hey! Give you the back, you're embarrassing! Hey! What are you doing with that anyway? That's not important. Yes, it is! I misjudged you, Larry. Wait, wait, wait. Taking advantage of a woman's frailty like that, you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh. First of all, what's at the top of this letter? It says, salutation here. <laughs> it's a big word! <laughs> well, that's what it looked like when I did that book, Letter Writings for Dummies. Oh my god. You're not dude. supposed to actually write that. That's what you're supposed to write, Dear Iris. I like it breaks with my Edward critiquing his grammar. <laughs> his letter writing. Oh my god. You know what? Uh, I should have skipped back. I should have uh, looked around first. So you were here in Heavenly Hall last night, weren't you, Larry? And you saw the lightning hit Dusky Bridge, didn't you? Is it sorry, Sorry doesn't cut it, scumbags, or a young lady like that. What am I still doing here? Oh, go on. He's our Maya. It is. Yeah. Wait, hold up. What now, pal? What are you talking about? What? That? What threatening stuff? I'll tell you what. You tried to scare Iris by threatening to expose her secret, pal. What do you mean, threaten her? What do you threaten her? Unless you want your secret to be exposed. That sure sounds like a threat to me, pal. Blackmail, in fact. Give me a break! It's a love letter! Haven't you ever been in love? What did you just say? Everyone knows that Gumshoe's in love. That's true. <laughs> My lover burns so hotly, he could melt all the snow on this mountain! Oh? Then what is the secret you mentioned? Come on, Edgy! Don't you get it? I'm talking about this secret love between her and me! What Luna said. So we can, like, throw Aren't you glad you're correct, Luna? Yeah, it's just like, so gumshoe. Happy. Grab him by the shoulders, I'll get his feet. We're gonna throw him in the river right now. You got it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, she wouldn't want old B Lady Bikini to know about it, right? About how hot and sour bit this we love of hell! <laughs> All right, then. Why did you send a love letter in a business-like manila envelope? It's after Labor Day. Why are you buying <laughs> clothes at the soup store, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault I didn't have any other envelopes. <laughs> then 
Why were you so quick to apologize, pal? It's because Edgy gave me that scary look at his! Okay, yeah, no, that's fair. What's wrong, right, Edgy? Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? Must resist urge to kill. Your hands are getting close to my neck. That's it? That's what all those huge locks were about? I, <laughs> I don't understand why you were so defensive. Well, I don't know either. I, I guess the thing is, I should have expected too much of a guy like me. <laughs> I never did. Uh, Larry, you were so much more likable in Ace Attorney 1. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hey. think they didn't know what to do with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, come on. Don't let it get you down. <laughs> but, but, Miss Edgeworth. This guy is still hiding something. I know it. What do you mean, detective? Don't forget what this guy said just a minute ago. If you really want to know, last night I saw something incredible. Wasn't it the the lightning flash? Granted, that's pretty incredible. He's right, Larry. What? You're looking at me like I'm a, like a hungry dog that just found a bone. That's offensive. What was this something incredible you saw last night? You're going to tell me, Larry, one way or another. Before we do... What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible graffiti problem you got there, pal. You don't know anything, detective! This is art! It's an expression of my bittersweet love for Iris. Larry, do you know what the difference between graffiti and true art is? I truth to be not, better not say anything cringe. No cringe from you, Edgy. It's how the artist himself defines it, right? Not a bad answer. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> Well, if that's the case, then all of my lunchboxes are massive pizzas too, pal. This is true. Weenies all around. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually, Larry, I agree with you. What's with, what is this festive-looking ornament? Oh, it reminds me of the art class in grade school. We used to have a lot of fun decorating in the classroom with origami, remember? Well, hi. Oh, yeah, you were never really any good at it. I got that. Really? Given a yeah, this guy. Wait, Gary? As a close thing, given a proper budget, I think Gumshoe is a really talented chef. You should take over for the. Um, Trebian? For Trebian. Yeah. Didn't he. Uh, he. When he was trying to work at the Wright & Co. Law Office, wasn't he like, I could cook real good? He can cook Maybe. instant noodles real good. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's what he right. said. He was, he was learning how to cook at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this guy was so bad, he could even fold a doll out of a crane. Everyone tried to comfort him, but he was just sitting there sobbing. <laughs> Oh, uh, really? Be quiet already! I'll uh, never forget the shame of that day! <laughs> what a crane! I can make a perfect quarter-inch crane without a single flaw! <laughs> you know, Edgy... Nothing for nothing, but a quarter-inch crane without a single flaw is not easy. Yeah, it's <laughs> quite a feat for uh, Prosecutor Edgeway. This is exactly why I hate childhood friends. <laughs> I you know say, your secrets. I you know say, your secrets. I know your secrets. Edgeworth, you can say you hate Larry. That's fine. <laughs> Let's go all the way to Dusky Bridge. It's a pretty long but easy walk. I fell down to four times on my way down here, sir. 
Oh, sorry about that, detective. I ate four mm. banana peels and tossed the peels on the stairs on my way you, down here. You ate the peels? Uh, Unless the bananas. <laughs> what? So that's what I was slipping on. Uh, be careful on your way back. Those dirty banana peels are still out there. Wait, At least throw them somebody. into the woods. The cow comes also, I turtle. Like, I like how the bit already had the snow set up on the stairs for them, but they needed to add banana peels. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm, that's a real important piece of information right there, Mr. Edgeworth. But banana, banana peels banana peels added to court record. Uh this is Eagle Rivers, uh It runs pretty fast, so it doesn't ice over, even in the winter. The current also apparently softens mm. the water. But had iced over, might would have been in some serious trouble. Oh, you right about that. He would have landed on the ice and slid downstream to who knows where. Probably did. Not exactly what I meant, but all right. Explain Bridge. It's a little far, but I have a pretty clear view of Dusky Bridge from here. I still can't believe it. Really? Hmm? What is it, Larry? I, uh, nothing. It's just nothing. Sounds pretty suspicious to me, pal. Something about that statement smells. And you know what they say. <laughs> when something smells, it's gotta be the butts. You know what's okay. really sending me, though? Can you make mm. Larry go away? I mean, not like gone, gone. <laughs> but the, the thing behind him. Uh -huh. <laughs> the sure, pot's upside sure. down, and I want to know why. Oh, come to think of it, when you were a kid, you were always saying, When I grow up, I want to be annoying with your friend people or something like that. That was a long time ago. But, see, now you've got the chance to follow your boyhood dream for a day! Edgy, you gotta do it! You gotta save my little Iris! Oh, you're right. Papa? Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> huh? Uh, this is exactly why I hate childhood friends. Okay, so before, uh, I, ask on, him, before I ask that him that last thing, thing, there's something important I have to do. Let's show my badge to everyone. <laughs> they go on a tour of badge showing. Uh, what's that thing doing? I need a pal then, Mr. Edgeworth. Is, is it really that hard? Oh, you bet it is, sir. A prosecutor wearing a defense attorney's badge. That's like a detective with a license to kill. Nah. Does this little thing hold that ominous of meaning? No. Iris? What that? Bikini. Look at my badge! <laughs> I love that face. Uh, I don't want to look at your badge. Yeah. My she don't badge. care. Oh, man. Okay. I mean, she doesn't realize that you're not a defense attorney, so. But badge! <laughs> Fair. A badge is a badge. I really want to gumshoe say something about, like, real men have a detective's badge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm docking your pet. Next thing we know, <laughs> next thing we know, uh, Edward gets a uh, detective's badge as well. I, I already told you, didn't I? I saw lightning strike Dusky Bridge. Yes, and I believe it was the incredible sight you saw. But now that I think about it, something doesn't quite ring true. Eh? What does? If that's all there is to your story, your heart wouldn't have had all those locks. Therefore, Larry... What are you talking about? I do believe you saw something last night. Something more incredible than lightning. Is it... Uh, wait! Where? Why? How? Hey, what do you think you're doing? If you hide anything from Mr. Edgeworth, 
I will arrest you on the spot, pale. More? Uh, more <laughs> no! Oh my god. No! no! <laughs> what are you doing, Larry? <laughs> what? What's, what's wrong, sir? This is gonna have to do it all over again. <laughs> Why are you blaring at me like I'm about to be hit by a bolt of lightning? I'm just about to hit it with this Harlequin. What? <laughs> I really want to drag the truth out of him. From Mr. E! To drag him to the witness stand. <laughs> oh, is that it? Mr. E! Oh, that's you it! it. <laughs> he doesn't care. Oh, <laughs> Mr. E! He is just that, is that a pun? didn't want to deal with this. Is, is that a this pun that Phoenix Wright has done? Has there ever been a Mr. E? I don't no. think so. Oh, there... I got a right tool. <laughs> there was. There was in a Scooby-Doo cartoon. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's February! All right. Oh, my. Mr. Larice feels that way about me. Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret out at all. No. <laughs> There's no time to be embarrassed. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just uh. hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. Were they not? In any case, whatever it was that he saw in the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. What does that mean? Mr. Larice is the witness today. No. I believe that none will be the first to take a stand. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen you the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Dunia. Who killed Miss Elise Dunon, correct? I want him to say it as if it was French, because he never actually met her and heard it pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just being pretentious. That is correct. It wasn't me. That's right. Uh, Edward's being pretentious, not me. <laughs> Very well, then. Um, Mr. Edward? Yes. You are a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I've made the necessary arrangements. I, I see. Iris. It's a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I am a defense attorney. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people and to believe until the bitter end. That's what my friend told me once. Mr. Edgeworth. I simply ask that you watch and decide for yourself whether or not I am fit to, the, to do the task I have been entrusted. <laughs> I may be a prosecutor, but don't worry, I've rigged the system for today. My sister will be prosecuting. <laughs> I actually Very do not well, know. Sir. I do not have any idea who the prosecutor is going to be if it's not Godot. Yeah, I don't know. Very well, sir. I leave it's my defense in your capable hands. It's like, <laughs> you're every, ready. Every prosecutor we've ever met knows who Edgeworth is, and the whole point is they want you're to. You ready, Edgy boy? I took the bar exam just for you. Uh! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine though. You all ready for something that's never happened Ooh. in any, any Ace Attorney playthrough we've done yet? Court is now in no for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. Oh! Hey. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the Ooh. same cannot be said for this prosecution in this place. In this case. <laughs> Every accent except Canadian. Indeed. I'm doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than mine would be. I'm not sure. It I'd is like better to than mine. Waste of the court's time. 
An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem that this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. What? I'm ready to announce my verdict at this time. The court finds the defendant. Not guilty? Oh, oh, God damn it. Yes! <laughs> what? What? <laughs> the prosecution stands ready. Uh, and you are. Oh my god. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Francisca von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. V von Karma, you say? Perchance, you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Coincidence. Legends are a thing of the past. I am a von Karma. That is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. You did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? By the, by the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss <laughs> Montecarma, do you have anything to say? There is no such thing as a weakling, or there is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. <gasps> there, there isn't, but I'm sure uh, once before in this courtroom. <laughs> I told you, there is no such weakling. What, 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 what is that, a whip? I'm not sure I care for such thing in my courtroom. <laughs> well, get used to it. Oh, but Bailiff, remove that court whip it. I have no objection to the whip. Hang on. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't? <laughs> the prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee, but there's still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting. Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush or chance to crush you slip through my fingers. A little sibling rivalry happening here. Mm -hmm. I see. I see you brought your flair for the histrionic. I'm going to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. <laughs> the stage is set. Now, continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Uh, very well. Miss Von Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. <laughs> the murder victim is the famed picture book author, uh, author Miss Elise Donin. Well, her body was found in the Hazakura Temple Court. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. So I, I know how you, I get how you stab somebody with that, but how do you stab somebody with that and then also put it back into the statue's hand? Don't worry about yeah. it. Sounds rough. The sword in the yeah. picture is, is, it was is the weapon in, in question, correct? It was in the statue's hand, right? So did, like, they tilt the statue back and then let it fall forward? I don't know. <laughs> there was a lot of horrible noises as they did it, I'm sure. Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. The temptation to talk fast with this voice is strong, but the more <laughs> I do it, the more I stumble. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I can't think of a word... I don't know how to do a German accent, <laughs> so I'm just doing my best. Yeah, we are going to Welcome to CATV. You're up. <laughs> Welcome to CATV. We're doing our best. We're this is a Spanish best. accent. Did you not know? <laughs> there is no mistake. This was this was the doing of Sister Iris. 
After all, there is a witness to the crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. <laughs> oh my god, she's so <laughs> short. <laughs> oh. Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on there. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. <laughs> what? Witness, please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> <laughs> if I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back for our back pain plagued witnesses. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Oh, uh, you know that's actually interesting because a lot of the times milk crates will have these written on saying they're not allowed to be used for like being stand stood on or anything. They have to get huh. returned to their ship for. That's because we had some in my gift shop, but we definitely broke that rule. Anyway. Nerd! <laughs> the, in the uh, film and theater, we call them apple boxes. Mm. Oh, yeah. They kind of used this bit with Cody Hawkins, too, didn't they? Yeah. They did, yeah. Once again, your name and occupation, please. <laughs> Little old me, while well, I'm the head of Oscar Temple, the eagle on Eagle Mountain. Little old me. Oh, the way she says that gives me... Oh, what's her name from Adventure Time? Uh, Matt Mar Mar No, I don't know that. Uh, Mabel. Describe. Uh, Apple. the elephant. The a Apple elephant. Oh. Yeah. Uh... Jay, Marzipan is Homestar Runner. Yes! <laughs> Not Applejack. That's, that's I don't cool. know. But I don't the, know. The, the way she's a little old me, it kind of gives me vibes with that. I yeah. me? Tree trunks! Tree trunks! That's it. Uh, <laughs> anyway. I said the line. He said the line. Eagle Temple. My name's Bikini. <laughs> you got it? Bikini. Nice to meet everyone. Speaking of Adventure Time, we got some James Baxter animation going on in those cheeks. <laughs> oh. Oh. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. What? <laughs> <laughs> of course you know. <laughs> The courtroom is the garden of holy judgment. Those with uh, lettery in their hearts will leave the sanctuary at once. You want me to leave? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I feeling who Joshua is? What game was that? That's Twilight. Uh, the one yeah. I'm with you. Oh! That you Joshua. already forgot Joshua? <laughs> How? <laughs> Look. Blocked it out of his mind. Nakito 2? Nakito. Nakito. Well, technically, Nakito. Nakito. hey, y'all. <laughs> Wanna slice of my warm apple pie? No! No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in summer. <laughs> in any case, Cowboy yeah, Kameda. Well, I had a brain fart, okay? Witness, I hear that you <laughs> saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. Also, it's a lot easier for me to remember characters in games that I actually play myself rather than just voice that someone else is playing. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Fair. I can still hardly believe it in myself, to be honest. There's no way a little liar is could have done anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say then. First, tell us about your own movements. That my day. This is that's the the big line. A boat. That's the big <laughs> the big Canadian line. Right Has the boat and an A. Yep. That night I was helping the acolyte and an acolyte with her training at the inner temple, but <laughs> it started rubbing off well, on you, didn't it? <laughs> well, as you can see, my back here likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the Acolyte and return to Hasukura Temple. There's no bath day in the temple, you see, and I needed to take a long, hot soak. Oh, I hate it now. <laughs> <laughs> it was after I had finished it, uh, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it! Okay, so that last line gave me Tree Trunks vibes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm really curious as to what her hair looks like. I don't think we ever see it. Mmm. Afro. <laughs> so it's simply so it's a lot of mom. That you find Which yourself in a running closet or a temple. Yes, she you can say that. If, you back, if my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the inner temple. I just noticed that her uh, chunk is pink. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There is only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle, now are you, Miles Edgeworth? Mm. Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. What is this in a temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits uh, is what we uh, it's what we train people with. You see, we'll be asking you. Uh, we'll be the ones asking you the questions, madam. In order to do that, a place is strong in spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Atlas must spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? It is uh, all quite exacting. I, it can't be non surprising Okay. I thought you said surprising. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you I... cut out there briefly. Yeah, oh. I think that was it. Like a tutor watching a ch er, watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. A tutor with a whip in your case. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember your tutor. <laughs> if that no. is the case, then why did you return to Hasakura Temple where the murder took place? Even though it's clearly stated in your testimony. Violently? That's right. It's no lucky matter, especially in winter. It'll happen to you. I, I can't uh, hold anything heavier than a knife or in a fork during cold months. Uh, just being alive is, is like, like strict training. <laughs> There's so many frames. On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right. Raging like a bull in a pig pen. I almost made it once or twice. Have you seen a medical professional? What's that? Hmm. All right. What next question? <laughs> I see that unless I'm warmed up, uh, I was going to. It was if I was going to finally finish me off. You know, right there, Saps? No. <laughs> <laughs> you left Bad Iris guy. to. You left Iris to help. With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10 p.m., so we were starting to enter into the training exercises proper. Oh, wasn't it your place to remain with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the Acolyte so that they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Yes, yes, she's a gentle, honest girl. She never once failed to follow my directions. Hold it. So you returned to the Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath. And my back's to blame for everything. I just thought. Does Ma Maya does probably doesn't even know there was a murder, does she? Yeah, I was thinking about this earlier. She has no idea what happened. She doesn't even know where, like, what happened to Nick. Well, I mean, for some reason, she hasn't even come to the the, the other side of the cliff, so she might be locked in that cave or something. Mm hmm. Sucks. She's been literally fridged. It's a do-or-be-done-in kind of world, after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? Mm -hmm. My, my, 
my, my, what a filthy little rogue you are. I know exactly what's on your mind. <sighs> I bet your next question is going to be... Where exactly did you wash? Ah, <laughs> uh, this is why you have to wash the youngins. What are you going on about? Ah, ah! <laughs> Pathetic Miles Edgeworth. To see. The lowest of the law. <laughs> <laughs> is there some sort of kick me sign stuck to the defense's bench? Now you understand, <laughs> Edward. Now you get you're, it. You're the one who put it there. Also, you decided that Francisco von Karma should be here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my pause for too long, you understand. So. It was just a bad finish, just as I was heading back. The crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take the winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Hmm, that certainly seems to be true. There's indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Okay. Hey Jake, so can you take the judge? All the info we can. Hey Jake, can you take the judge for a few lines? Yes, I'm gonna make you sound great. Let's go. <laughs> nice. Good luck. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> okay. You're helping. Back. Don't urge the help the act. What's what evidence I have? Right. Uh, the good ones. Carried by police. Murder weapon, apparent, the apparent murder weapon. Okay. Very nice. The hood. Iris's hood. A huge. Did she have her hood? She shouldn't have. She gave it to Nick, right? Yeah, she gave mm -hmm. it to Nick on the night of the murder, didn't she? Yeah. And yeah. I'm guessing Edgeworth got it from Nick. Yes. Or something. Iris. So. Okay, so the bridge caught fire at quarter to eleven. Would she have heard the lightning? face. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> it's confidence, you know? The magic bottle. Okay, I guess this proves that there was an orb, because the current staff does not have an orb. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, so where is the orb? Bell at 10. So the do bell rang at 10. Did we raise this? Um, What's that last photo again? Crime photo. Okay. This is the crime scene. Okay, so we don't have a specific time for Elisa's death. Just between ten and eleven. The bell rang at ten, ten. and then that's when Maya and Bikini went to the inner temple. And that probably took them a good amount of time to get over there. Or no, they left before... Did they leave beforehand? What does it say in Bikini's testimony right now? Because I think she goes over what time she left and everything. Yeah. Did we get a testimony from Iris? Iris testimony. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Ring lights out bell at 10 and then was in her room until the murder. Discovered. I was helping an acolyte with a training in the temple. What 
time with any of this stuff. Give... Yeah, she doesn't give us a time. Are we just supposed to use the Iris' testimony? Yeah, I guess we use it here. I feel like that's not reliable. It's not re like reliable evidence. I don't know. Well, if it wasn't reliable evidence, we wouldn't have it, right? Well, it might not be re reliable yet. I don't know. Oh, Try it. Sent. Yeah, you just say it. Iris's testimony. Objection! Okay. Ah! Witnesses have to go undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, 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 don't you worry. I'm more than up for the task. I'm a woman of faith. After all, the head honcho of Hasagura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant Iris. She claimed that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. No, she said that? A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? Yeah. The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe she, that she would lie. Oh, hmm, she does indeed have honest eyes. <laughs> All of people <laughs> lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? I just got whipped a couple times. Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means... We must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me, and did you want to play that game? You feel oh, lucky, you little man. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, well, that, that, that isn't what I, exactly what I... <laughs> My memory's perfect, crystal clear. Especially in winter. Oh. Oh, man. I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you were going to question the memory of this witness... You will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that loan would do the trick. Then please add your comments about Iris to the testimony. And let us return to the cross-examination. That night I was helping the Acolyte with her training at the Inner Temple, but... As you can see, my backlogs act up. So I just came to the inner temple. Uh, she was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. No, that's a lie. Oh. Are you sure you're not making a mistake? <laughs> you, young man, you need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. This is such a terrifying frame. <laughs> 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 no. I I just like. always wear the same clothes. A small thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake, little boy. Thinking I made a mistake. An excellent finish there, witness. Get him. Still a half of one Get his ass, witness. Easy, present the hood here. Yeah. Get the ass, witness. Because <laughs> yeah, after dinner, she gave her hood to Nick. Yeah. Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant who you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? 
Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing. I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it right there. Why do you have that? <laughs> That's the question of the day now, isn't it, Ms. Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out, Bell was wrong. Wh what? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, then the iris she saw should have been missing this very hood. Wow, what a Not a bad beginning at all, exposing contradictions like this. I don't understand that happy look on White's face every time he does it. You just wait. Order! Order the go! Ah! Sister? This hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well... I do tend to, tend to make too many of them. I see. Stockpile. Surplus of hoods, eh? Each time is only given one hood, though. This should be the only hood that I own. Hmm, this is quite strange. If there are a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There is no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness. While I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. Uh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall now continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. Those scenes of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. You just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. I'll try. I'll about that. <laughs> you all right there? I'll try. I'll feel about that. I finished my bath at around 11, and I thought I, I should return to the inner temple. As I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard and took a look at Iris was... Oh, Mystic Elise! And with the sword of all things! Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces out to, onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. Please refrain from, a, from conjecture. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place... Then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Miss Dr Edgeworth in two in court! And me, seeing it all from this very chair! <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting better at this. Or, well, uh, something like that. This judge... His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. Hey. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Uh, pardon me for Dude. just, like, half a minute. Okay. Hi. Okay. Oh, how'd y'all do today? Anybody have foolish some fun? Fool with a very foolishly foolish uh, imagination. My uh, uncle got uh, came north today, which means oh, yeah? he had his dog and his uh, daughter is now sleeping in the uh, apartment upstairs. Oh, oh. nice. How what much kind of this can they hear? Uh, nothing. However, I could hear every single footstep. Uh, a big dog and a three-year-old daughter walk kind of a lot. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I'll get. I'll find a picture. Okay. I'm back. Is it a big dog, a small dog? It's a Is bigger it... end. It's like the two and a half flecken. Two and a half flecken. <laughs> two and a half flecken. <laughs> That's a lot it's of yes. explosions in your house right now, man. <laughs> Welcome back. I, did, I just, I had to feed Maisie. Ah. I realized that the reason she was asking for attention is because she was hungry. Hungry. Ah, uh, that makes sense. 
Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? No. Hmm. I'm Tessa Francisco von Karma. You remember? I have okay. to do my bath. Oh, we read this. Yes. Yeah. Okay, nice to the yard. Kind of face. How did she know she was pushed from the window? Um, that she's making conjecture. I think we could ask. How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Let me think for a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. It's about 50 minutes from Dusky Bridge to Hasagura Temple. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Um, I feel like this map is not to scale. Yeah, probably not. It's fine. It was made like 50, 100 years ago. Maybe it's hilly on that side. 50, 100. It's a lot, I know. It's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Still, you never made it back there that night, did you? Th that's right. I was heading along the walkway towards the main hall, when suddenly... <gasps> Death. Hold it! Hold it! You say you heard a noise. Thump! Just like that. That could only be the sound of the victim falling. It's very quiet in the temple, you know? All I could hear was snoring before that point. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Thump! Just like that. Hang on but a then, But then, couldn't this noise you heard have just been snow falling to the ground? Never thought of that. <laughs> 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 we are talking about a murder. The next one to laugh gets a whipping. <laughs> hey, Karma. Hey, hey. Love this photograph. Yes. He's immune, immune to this. You didn't laugh. Immune. No. It's a Von Karma. What did you expect? <laughs> This is the second time that the witness has testified to seeing the defendant. But, some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't mean you have to give him the right to. The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword. Sister Bikini try to recall exactly who it is you saw, as clearly as you can. Hmm. Well, you're a, a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it. There was something awfully strange about her. Something that's been bugging me all this time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. Real quick, did they add the, the attorney's badge to his lapel for specifically this scene? Did they? Must have. It, it kind of looks right. He's, he's got never... a little yellow dot. I just don't remember if he's always been there. I don't know. Her hood. So. And like he's never Anyways, been seen from this angle up. before. Her hood. Yeah. Her hood. That's right. It's coming back to me. Iris. She wants to wear her hood. Ah oh, shit. I thought something was out of place, but it makes it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she gave that hood away to someone, right? Hmm. Huh. You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. Hmm. 
What do you say, Mr. Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? Nah, not really. I mean, of course it is. <laughs> I posted in the dog pictures if anyone was interested. <laughs> Thank you. Does Minish mm -hmm. appear to put me at a disadvantage? But I can't see any other lead at the moment. Your Honor, I would like this new s these new statements to be ad added to the testimony. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. If you want to hang yourself, you only need to ask. I'll gladly lend you my whip. Um, don't say that. Witness, add that statement to your testimony. I'll just ignore that. It's fine. <laughs> no problem. I'll press the others two statements first. The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? Which means the victim's room was on the second floor. No, no. Haskara Temple is a single-story building. Saps has a golden doodle. That might be the case. Oh, yeah. what, is that but the like mountain a... itself slopes downward. Is that like ret... a golden retriever poodle hybrid? Poodle, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. my pair of stalls looks like this. Look at that. Yeah. It seems like it, yep. Just a little uh, singed golden doodle. <laughs> Which elevates the main gate side of the temple and uh, the guest rooms in the back. Uh, to about the height of a two-story building. I see. And the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes, I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to her room, after all. Hold it. What makes you so sure of all this? It's just like I said, or uh, told you earlier. I heard a noise from the courtyard. Okay. Thump. Just like that. You have one smart sister. I'll give you that. The autopsy, er, the autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around ten feet in height. <laughs> Hmm, it appears the witness was not mistaken. Yep, yep, yeah, I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a one of faith after all, the head honcho of Hasegura Temple. There's only two of them working there. <laughs> There's only two of them working there. <laughs> What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? No snappy comeback or remark? It doesn't feel like she is lying. This is very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the incident in which the defendant stabbed the victim. There are only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Harris, my own, own abilities as, as a defense attorney. Okay, let's press the new statement. Okay, so it's this. It was that she didn't, yeah. You are sure about that? Yes, after all, we always wear the same clothes. Uh, I don't mean uh, because we're poor, you understand. It's our style. Yes, that's it. There's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Uh, anyway, she looked entirely different from normal, so that really struck, her, uh, struck out. Like me holding a whippet puppy instead of my whip. <laughs> Not the golden doodle! <laughs> No! It's a no. whip. At, at least then it might bite you and not someone else. I just didn't have her hood on. I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, please tell us about the victim, eh? Okay. Loss of blood from stab in back. I fell ten feet after death. Uh oh. 
Uh... Okay. Must have occurred at. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Objection to that. Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say, anyway. Uh, oh, please do. My brain is something else. Especially in winter. Me too. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Ms. Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The, the autopsy report? Uh-oh. The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah! <laughs> but, 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 I truly hurt! What the? What? <laughs> you know. Uh, you, you know, thump. That's right, it says after death right here. Just one question, Ed Miles Edgeworth. When did you get that autopsy report? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard, how did the victim then go on to take a ten foot fall? Ah! God, I really wish that had happened. Yeah. Order! Order! <laughs> That's what we call karma. The victim was killed and then fell. Actually, her name's Bon Karma, if Mr. Edgeworth, please get it right. If that is the case, <laughs> then the victim must have been killed in a room. Don't you agree? Th that is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the, the defendant in her own room. And she was then thrown out of her window and down to the courtyard. Were there any signs of a struggle in Miss Dunom's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Well, well, Miss Volcarma, was there any blood? No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. She really is hitting no one but the judge today. The whip is, <laughs> well, the whip is just caused she traces. Would, she yeah. she respects Edgeworth. Yeah. Yeah. She I has hit, whipped him a couple times, I think. Uh, yeah. Has there been? I feel like she has. Your, your whip is just I caused think traces. It's a lot more rare, though. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious playoff beard. <laughs> However, if there was no blood in the room, then that's all you have. I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this. As I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it's removed. When it produces the most blood. Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body. That would be when the blade is removed. Hmm. Indeed. With the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. With, with the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable one of thinking. We have come to a conclusion, then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all the contradictions. Yay. Order, order, order. I must admit that this is a probable aversion of events. I'd expect no less from Franziska von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. <laughs> it seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition from your part and tell us only the facts, please. Why? <laughs> Witness, please! Remain standing on the crate! <laughs> Don't go selling me short now. You... The way the winter snow has bent me out of shape. Especially my back and my mood. 
sister. Please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. Hmm. With the whip? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right, all right. Oh, she's into it. <laughs> Where are the details? When I looked across the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mr. Elise. I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? When I woke, oh, okay. Missing arm it was stabbing Mystic Elise through the back. So she could have easily have seen um, Iris removing the sword. Ooh. Oh. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strives for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. And if her testimony shows, oh, she could have easily just seen Iris removing the sword, so the killer was still up in the room, then uh, we call that reasonable doubt. Perfection is an impossibility, Francisca von Karma. I'm here to teach you just that. At that time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course. I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the incident in which the victim was stabbed? Stabbed. Stabbed. Hold it. Think carefully. This is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here. I think uh, for all that, I'm worried. No, when I looked over, this sword was already in Mystic Elise's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but... This testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in her room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? That's right! Some of it has spat onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room. And her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. What? Clothes were blood-flecked as well? Fleck. Mm. Like flecking. Mm. <laughs> Seems quite conclusive to me. And if fucking mean spotted. Mean spots. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We figured oh, yeah. it out. I they forgot, your, I forgot your your name your dog's name was basically Spot. <laughs> yeah. Etymology. <laughs> you know what other dog name also means Spot? <gasps> what? Kerberos. Or Cerberus. <laughs> oh, that's fun. It's it all connected. Means spotted. <laughs> Flecken is actually Cerberus. <gasps> Should I press That's this point? That's why it's explosions. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw a little, saw a little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now you say you saw the victim bleeding? Well, well, I say that uh, what I saw is what I saw. Oh, what did you see? Scrunnel, isn't the Shin Megami Tensei Cerberus a lion? It, like a Chimera-ish thing, yeah. It's weird. Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed. But I saw the girl pull the sword out of her pl plain estate. 
pulling the sword out? Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Hmm? Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Uh, oh, was that important? Yes! Yes! More Here. important than you can imagine. Oh, yeah. I saw the blade in the instant it was, uh, in which the blade plunged into the hilt. It was plunged into the out. hilt? Wow. Oh. Um... That's excuse. Ah. Uh, yup. Yup. Pass that shit. Smoothly, you say. You're saying you saw the sword smoothly slide out. That's right. The whole thing happened right after the gold statue of Mister uh, Army. Miss Police was on the ground, and Iris was stooped over her. The sword was buried up to the hills. When Iris stood up, the sword in her hand just slid out of Mr. Khaleesi's body. It slid out from the gaping wound. Ah! It goes without saying that if the sword was removed, there would be bleeding. Nothing out of place here. Objection, bitch. Is that really the case? Look at the sword. I can't help but feel that something about this testimony is very out of place. But something which couldn't possibly have happened appears to have happened. What could it also, possibly be? How would it slide out smoothly? Yeah. It created a big hole because of this bronze. I mean, if it had gone all the way in, it would have like ripped her body to shreds. Uh-huh. There would have been plenty of bleeding before it was removed. Oh, also, yeah. also, these prongs are wider than the hilt actually is, so wouldn't it just yeah. keep... Yeah. yeah! This is Also, weird. there would have been more blood on the sword. Yeah. Just a little. Right. Yeah, also just more... There would have been blood all the way up, instead of just in the front. It would have been way mm -hmm. more of a mess. Yeah. There is a lot of giveaways. Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least I'd like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. Well, what do you mean? You make it sound like uh, I still have a life. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain your- Explain yourself! To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear, but meaningless drivel. I too may appear to be weak and frail. Did you? But I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. I don't think anybody's accusing you of that, Miss Von Karm. <laughs> the objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. That isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body after the hilt, well, just look at all the branches on it. It certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. That's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. That's nothing more than just conjecture. In reality, the victim was blamed for... The stabbed. victim was sta stabbed with a shichishito. Steve. 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 Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. <laughs> I'm not finished. 
There is still one more conclusive contradiction. You've still got one more. This one is simple. If this sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Ah. Yeah, that's the big one, honestly. Yeah. Could have led it with that, but he wanted, he wanted to stretch it out, you know, make it dr dramatic. Yeah. If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! Bravo, Miles Edgeworth. Raising this many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. It is a wild ass sword. <laughs> it is. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. But what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is? The weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shitashito. What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Hey, she said the thing. Should it have been? Smile as you read that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard Let, not to. <laughs> let's examine this again. What was it that made us think the sword was the murder weapon? It's because Mr. Garner was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is, only the, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by this scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that, that the Shichishiro was the murder weapon. Order, order, order. Ah! Again. So maybe the Shichishito was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like object. Mm -hmm. That's true. No, it's not. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth. What do you got to say about that? If that is so, you. I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious question? Yes, namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying if the police search the main hall in the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to if a sword-like object was found. That's... Answer the question, Miss Von Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Uh-oh. Hmm. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me. Could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. Oh, my God. What is it, sister? I was just thinking, it's possible that just maybe what actually happened was it was just over there. What exactly are you going on about here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe, maybe. I think I know where this all was disposed of. You what? Well then. Who did you whip? I think we need to hear more er, hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible! What else? What else could this old woman have seen? Oh, you know. What do you see with your special eyes? That another murder I saw around. The, I, I, oh, I saw the murder sorry. around eleven PM. Sorry, I, I forgot that this was new <laughs> testimony. And after asking what it be reported, I went out to the main gate. And there, I saw tracks. Tracks that indicated the snowmobile that had been used. Oh god, the snowmobile. Uh... 
It takes 50 minutes to walk to the Bridge, but less than five minutes to use one of those. Only five? Man, you're a slow driver. Maybe they threw them up into Eagle River and came back while I was up down. Maybe, maybe it's really hilly or something. The blow snow wheel. <laughs> I just could have done that. She can drive a snowmobile after all. Hmm. Why does he do that so much? Witness, mm. please tell us everything you know right away right next time. Like a motorcycle, but for winter times. <gasps> Blow, Blow snowmobile. A snow scooter. Well, I'm not in my best of shape, so with my back and my age, you know. A snowder cycle. <laughs> and the jet ski is the aquatic motorcycle. Is there an oh. aerial motorcycle? Not yet. Oh. Quite. There were indeed snowmobile tracks in front of the main gate. Oh, the hover bike? I was going to say, I'm going to stretch it out and say maybe a hang glider. Maybe. Because, like, hang gliders are pretty cool. Yes. Look at this photograph. <laughs> a snowmobile, eh? I see. Well, it certainly is an interesting theory. The tracks begin in front of Hazakura's temple and run all the way to Dusky Bridge. That solves your pesky little problem, yes? The Eagle River's current is quite swift, meaning that it doesn't freeze over in winter. Making it the perfect place to dispose of the murder weapon. Did she really go to the river to dispose of the murder weapon? Mr. Edgeworth, your cross-examination, please. Did we get that photo in evidence? Uh, I think we got one, did we? I think we did. Yes. Yeah. Right. From main gate to dusky bridge. Wait. There's only so one set of tracks, there? though. Uh, it was snowing that night. Uh, you could try. Snowing? When was it snowing? Weather day. Well, what about footsteps? Snow from 7 to 10.50. Okay, so there's only one set of tracks, and the murder happened at 11? The murder happened between 10 and 11. Okay. We don't have anything more specific than that. Hold it! You are sure about the time? Yeah, I was worried about it after all. So she's saying that she saw Iris with the body in the courtyard uh, with the lead pipe at about at about 11 p.m. <laughs> so that would have been right at the tail, like right as or after the snow stopped and by then the bridge was already on fire. Fire! Fire! What was that? Because I have a strong sense of responsibility. Especially at this time of year. Yeah, Claire was uh, being doused in freezing water at the time. I couldn't very well take in an easy, uh, take it easy in all the bath all night. Now could I? So at last, I decided to leave Hasakura Temple. Estimation of the time seems reliable, at least. Please continue, sister. And after asking you that it be reported, I went out to the main gate. Uh, who did you ask? You asked. F oh, Nick, right. <laughs> we, were, we were there. You asked Phoenix Wright to report the crime, correct? Right, right. The one who trampled me. To. It seems she's the type to hold a grudge. Oh, 
Oh, uh, there isn't a joke in the main hall, so I sent it to the bridge. I was just really trying to say There isn't crack. a joke in the main hall? <laughs> Bo. I, I was reading chat at the same time because I know, I I know exactly clean. how that happened. Ah. Saps has to be reading the chat and scrolling through Twitter for memes. He's got oh. a lot on his plate. The memes are important. <laughs> mm -hmm. Part of the experience. Phoenix right. He didn't even have his cell phone on him. He had forgotten it at home, apparently. What a naive boy, as always. Not only do I carry my phone, but I always have my whip in hands, too. Anyway, I was really scared, and it was taking him a while to get back. So I thought I'd go out by the main hall, the main gate for a spell. You're so crackling, you might need to reboot. Yeah. I, I am crackle. I, I, I heard enough information that I was crackling or not. No. I was asking. Yeah, oh yes, you, you are crackling. Yes, you are crackling. A bit. As I recall, there was a snowmobile, snowmobile outside the main gate when I visited. That's it. The, the, that's the only one we have. It'll run no matter how much the snow falls. No, you're certain the snow the point, You're certain the snowmobile was there at the main gate when you arrived. Am I still crackling? Mm -hmm. Uh keep okay. talking and we'll see. I'm gonna keep talking so nobody Yes yeah. of course! I was parked in front Okay, I'm gonna I have to restart my computer for the gift to disappear. That's the only way to fix it. Okay, he was barely crack like it was it had gotten better, but I uh, okay, I can try for a bit more. Yes, of course. It was parked in front of the gate. So, she had already gone, discarded the murder weapon, and returned by that time. I'm not sure this is really relevant. What should I do? Sure. Always press further. I need answers to every possible doubt. The snowmobile in question was it still warm at that time. Huh? 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean, eh? What do you mean, Miles Edgeworth? I'm playing to a slow crowd here. It goes without saying that using a snowmobile will heat its engine. If it was still warm, that means it was recently used. Ah, I see. I, I never thought of that. Mm, that's right. I thought of that too. Of course you did. Then answer the question, please, witness. Do I have to? I don't often go around uh, touching hot engines. I, I recommend the reboot. Mm. Yeah, you are so okay. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, I'm gonna be right back! Featuring uh, Jay. We'll take Kini. Jay? Yeah. Jay, man. Now that you mention it, <laughs> there wasn't any snow on it. That's a good sign. Snow? Yes, for some reason only the snowmobile wasn't covered in snow. There wasn't any snow on it? Curses! It seems highly likely that the killer did use the snowmobile that night. How long does it take to get to Dusty Dusky Bridge by snowmobile? You said five minutes tops, right? Yeah. Yeah. In that case, why didn't you use it yourself? You have spared yourself some walking. Ah, uh, there's a reason for that. Have we got a moment for me to explain? <laughs> in court? Well, I think that's why the question was asked in the first place. Oh, it was about a month ago. I was driving my beloved little snowmobile, happy as could be. So cool. I fetched some water and was heading back when I went and crashed into a tree. Oh. Those three in my, my back both went crunch just like that crunch. Mmm. <laughs> crunch. I don't. That's not a good yeah. crunch sound effect. It sounds like a gulp of water. <laughs> I haven't been able to find the carriage to ride anything since back. Then. Hello! I'm stealing your, my voice back. Okay. Goodbye, Dr. Anyway, the killer must have used it. Much better. Uh, you missed that we found out there was no snow on the snowmobile. Yes. Uh, and... Which would indicate it was used. 
And Bikini yes. didn't definitely did not write it because she is afraid to ever since she crashed on it like a month ago. Yeah. That I heard. Yes. <laughs> Refresh our memory. How long were you knocked out for? Like I said, somewhere between 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. It's possible to get to the bridge and back in 10 minutes using the snowmobile. I have to concede that is more than enough time. Is that all you wish to concede, Miles Edgeworth? While it would have been possible time-wise, one element remains out of place here. Oh, and what would this mystery element be? The killer's reasoning, your honor. Why did the killer do all of this? Why did he go to Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon when there are other methods? Hmm, too many unanswered questions. Your response, Miss Von Karma. <laughs> Turning to me for help over the slightest thing. Why don't you think for yourself once in a while? You're right. Whoa! She's as over the top as always. Anyway. Whatever the reason, the fact remains that the defendant could have done this. The murder weapon was disposed of in the river. Another point to me, Miles Edward. Another mystery to feed the fire. Was there any reason to go and throw away the murder weapon? Luckily, there's surely a problem with this testimony. Now all I have to do is start poking holes in this flawed account. Ah! Ah, uh, I don't know how to get this as presented evidence, but she said she saw the murder at around 11. And then when she woke up about 10 to 20 minutes later, she saw the tracks. Okay. And we can tell so from this like photo. 11.10. Yeah, like 11, between 11 and 11.20, somewhere around there, there is only one set of tracks, and it's the returning tracks. The snow stopped at about 11.50. So before all this happened. So if the snowmobile was used, wait, the snow at... stopped at ten fifty, right? Yeah, snow stopped at ten fifty. Yeah. So if this if the snowmobile had been used after the event that Bikini witnessed, there should be two sets of tr of tracks, mm -hmm. meaning that it only returned after the snow stopped and it had left to go to the ri to the river to the bridge before the snow stopped. Do you think Larry used it? No, 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 no. Larry was already at, Larry was still at the bridge when when Nick went there, so never mind. Tracks that indicated some people have been But how do I like I there's like several state there's like two statements and two pieces of evidence that I would need to show for them. Mm. Mm. There's the picture and then there's the weather report. Snow from 7 to 10.50. And she saw the murder after the snow had already stopped. So by the yeah. time she saw the murder, the snowmobile was already gone. It just hadn't returned yet. Or it returned around that time. Again, how do I show that? Uh, the, the weather report, right? Well, but do I no? show I the on... weather report or the the picture into what statement? I saw uh, tracks. Here. I think you should report the weather report here. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I can see that. I'm going to save first. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Um, I'm not sure either. Percent. I guess the weather data. No? Data. No? Really? Uh. Mm. Don't try to play your mind games with me. Edgeworth. 
crown of cockamamie course of action was that? Maybe they threw the weapon into Eden River. And, and came back. Okay, this has got to be it. Okay. I show the picture yeah. to this. Yeah, show the picture here. And it shows that they could not have left and come back. Otherwise, it would be too, too soon. Here we go. There we go. Yes. Hey! I admit this photograph proves something. Proves the snowmobile was used on the night of the murder. You finally accepted the inevitable, it seems, Miles Edgeworth. However, if what the witness says is true, then why is there only one set of tracks? What do you mean? Iris left Hazakura Temple, threw the weapon into the river, and then returned. If this was the case, then naturally there should be two sets of tracks in the snow. Those from heading out to the bridge, and those from coming back. Ah, uh, you're right! <laughs> you are forgetting one thing, Miles Edgeworth. No, we were thinking about it really hard. On the night of the murder, it was snowing. The tracks leading to the bridge were erased by snowfall. This removes your precious contradiction, now doesn't it? I see. When she, while she was at the river, the snow stopped. Leaving just the return tracks in the snow. What do you have to say now, Miles Edgeworth? <laughs> Violet. Stop being funnier than us. <laughs> Violet is hilarious, I've noticed. <laughs> Violet's really funny. <laughs> Was there a flaw in her theory? This idea that the snowfall covered one set of tracks. It's flawless. There is a contradiction. <laughs> it's flawless. <laughs> <laughs> flawless victory. The tracks of the river were covered by snow. What a nice theory. However, Miss Von Karma, that is impossible. Would you care to explain why there is a rude index finger currently pointed in my general direction? <laughs> point, point, point. I thought this was normal. <laughs> no need. The evidence will do all the talking for me. Oh, on the night of the murder, the killer went to and returned from Dusty Bridge. In order to dispose of the murder weapon, the outgoing tra tracks were erased by snow. Or so claims Miss Von Karma. Mr. Edgeworth, present your evidence to the contrary, eh? Well, we in a report. Evidence that the outgoing tracks were not covered by the snow. Where the... Whether the... Whatever the weather, whether the weather, whether we like it or not. Oof. Ah, witness. <laughs> witness, please tell us again what time it was when you witnessed the crime. Like I said, it was around 11. Of course, this means that the weapon was thrown away after that time, correct? On that note, please take a look at this data. It is the weather report for Eagle Mountain on the night of the murder. The weather report. Snow started to fall at 7 p.m., but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up. Ah. Order! Order! Please don't whip me. Oh, she mm. didn't. Very well done. <laughs> Just he does it every time. Every, every time he says order, she's she's whipped him for some reason. It looks like Miss Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. <laughs> Von Karma is Team Chaos. <laughs> ah, so she's chosen the correct team. Mm -hmm. It's no. too soon to be closing this trial due to snow. How is any prosecutor not Team Order? <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, how pathetic of you to, to rely on the weather of all things. 
Answer me this, then. When is a weather report ever correct? Ah, no, 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 no. You've got it all wrong. Godot is barely a prosecutor. <laughs> Godot is Team Chaos. This is in the forecast. It's This is actual data. This, this happened. Forecast, data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. Yeah, that's not flying. It may have er, it may have been snowing in the vicinity well past 11 p.m. I'm deciding for the court that this evidence is inadmissible. Mm. Right. It's true. It cannot be totally sure, eh? What? Uh, how did she pull that off? If it stopped snowing at Hatsukura Temple when the murder took place, you need to provide conclusive evidence of this. Come this far, there's no turning back now. Very well. I too cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Huh. You can't back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, I get it. Yeah, Very I get well, it. Very well then, Mr. Edgeworth. Where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? Um, probably a It literally just hit me like a ton of bricks when I said, oh, I get it. Picture of the murder? Yeah. There is no snow. There is oh, no snow. There's, no. there's snow in the statue. There's no snow on Elise. Yes. Maybe um her body temperature had already snuffed out. But there's yeah. no snow on the sword either. Fair point. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, all right. Yeah. And you think there would be some on her clothing? Yeah. Like the part of her... That was hard uh, to get out of clothes. Like yeah. your sleeve. Well, like her sleeves would definitely not smell. Yeah. Take you gonna help getting those bricks off you? Please. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being... Whether or not it was snowing in that courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right. But proving that is... Incredibly easy. It's actually like really easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> if we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I'm referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow, with just one exception. And that is the victim herself. Miss Elise Dunon. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. It had stopped snowing when she was killed, that's why. Wait. If what? the crime photo is taken after everything happened, wouldn't this sort not be in the body? Mm -hmm. Oh, because... because yeah. So, a Bikini saw the so a sword being drawn out of Lisa's body, and then when she came mm -hmm. to, that's what she saw in the photo. Yes. In other words, in other words, if the killer really did go to Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon, then in this photograph, there should be two sets of tracks. Ah! Oh, mama. Order, so order, order, order! Just look at Why are you crying? Those boxes just, just... are so high. The bailiff would have had to have like picked her up and placed her on the box. <laughs> yes, or she climbed like a champ. <laughs> yeah. Just what are you suggesting, Miles Edgeworth? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure myself. But this is simply what all the facts point to. That night, someone used the snowmobile to leave Hazakura Temple. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snowing. Of course it was, because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when this person returned to Hasukura Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remained. Can I 
to say something. It sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There's only one key for the snowmobile. Hmm? Furthermore, on the night in question, we know the defendant had it. The key was found in their room after the murder. It can only mean that night. Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. Well, why? But Iris had said that she never went there. I should probably press on this point some more when I get the chance. The snowmobile can't cross the suspension bridge. So she must have left it on the Hasakura side of the bridge and crossed it on foot. That sounds right. But what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to the Hasakura Temple... I didn't see anything near Desuka Bridge. Y you must have just failed to see it, sister. Maybe, but when I made it back at the uh, Hasakura Temple... It was there, by the main gate. The, the snowmobile, I mean. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. But, but that isn't possible. <laughs> order, order, order. Order in the quads. What does it all mean? Do we know what Lynch's. time she came back to the temple was? I mean, she said she left Around the bath 10? at like 11, so... Like, she started heading back at 11. No, she said she saw the murder at 11. Yeah, the, when as she was heading back, as she was leaving oh, the Oh, as temple. she was heading back to the inner yeah. temple. Okay. Yeah, as she was leaving Hazakura, she saw the, uh, the incident at 11. Did she, do, uh, do we remember how long she said she was in the bath for? I don't know. I know she said it, I just forget how long. What do you think, uh... Jack? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Chat might remember. So then what was the snowmobile used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. But it had been, and the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All we know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowmobile to return to Hazakura Temple. I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. I'm tired of talking about this. I think we learned all we can from this witness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I have nothing more to add. I told you everything. Everything that I know. Well, that's what refreshing is this? for a witness to say. An incredibly reliable witness? Yeah. How weird. <laughs> but then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness, who could testify to having seen the snowmobile. You smell something? A witness, oh, huh? Oh no. Was there no one out, walking perhaps, near Dusky Bridge on that night? Mm. strong bad. I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go uh, out wandering in bed. Unless he had something really important to do. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. An no. idiot may well have gone wandering out on that subarctic night. No! Your honor. Actually... There just might be one individual who may be of help to us. Really? You know of someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night of the murder. I don't know for sure if he saw it or not. But there are two things about him that do come to mind. We, wait, you might you were, yes? First, that he saw something incredible on the night of the murder. 
And the second being. This individual that I'm thinking of went wandering outside on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Oh. I think I might take offense to that. Mr. Edgeworth, who's this idiot you're talking about? It's Phoenix Wright! <laughs> Look at this whole cast of idiots. <laughs> Look at all but these idiots. One of these idiots outshines the other idiots. <laughs> I love these idiots. <laughs> This guy must be a product of Jean-Luc de Leduc's Guide to Obnoxious French Painting. Jean-Luc de Leduc? <laughs> this is Larry Butts, a principal of the- a disciple of the victim, Elise Dumont. Girl, what are you chasing? <laughs> a mice. No, she's- she's just pouncing on random spots of the bed. Interrupting herself to lick her feet. Love that Girl. baby. Interesting. She's chasing her tail! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Your cat thinks she's a dog. <laughs> oh my god! Hang on, wish her Very cute. Very <laughs> cute. This is important Very... documents. Yes. And then, of Mom, course, she I... stops. Hang on, how do I take a. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Chase your damn tail, girl. <laughs> I'm watching she's just, you. She's just licking it now. Damn, she's. Anytime I try to take a, a photo of her when she's doing something cute, she immediately stops doing it. And as soon as I put yeah, the camera that's... away, she goes back to it. It's infuriating. <laughs> the defense will hand over that phone and allow me to take over. <laughs> and why was he wandering a boot outside on the night of the murder? That's... I could tell them all about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness. Or I even call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was perhaps... <laughs> Searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate, unreliable looking man. What exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he's in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. Very. You may have escaped me yesterday. But today I'm going to get everything out of you. The court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. Ms. Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. In the meantime, I'll be getting some whip-proof glass up here. Good. Well then. You can also you can also just get cream, so you can get whipped cream. Boy, that's that's real good. Court is now in recess. <laughs> <laughs> Did we continue? Run from me, Judge. <laughs> that's that's quite intimidating. <laughs> Yes, save. Savey, savey. Savey, savey. Save. Uh, Boy, Larry's about to be so dumb, it's gonna be great. February. Are you ready? Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not really sure what to say. Irish, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. Alright. I'll help you in any way I can. First, about that fact. You really didn't go to the inner temple, correct? The last, the last witness claims to have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, 
It's just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hazakura Temple. Very well. The second thing, then. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night, were you the one who used the snowmobile? There is only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out on Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Mm. <gasps> How many of these are you gonna have? <laughs> oh my god! Not How many secrets do you have? You said you what? she was covered in tech locks. I think she's up to 13 locks. Mm -hmm. Oh, 12, maybe. Maybe. I can't tell you about that yet. Yet. Not until her safety is confirmed. Oh. The safety of the Acolyte. The Acolyte, huh? You must be talking about Maya. Iris, look at me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Dunant? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought. No psycho locks. Very well. It is my job to get the, to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. I realized something. Mm -hmm. And this is specific mm -hmm. to my performance of the character. Mm -hmm. He says psycho locks. Like the U.S. and U.K. difference between airplane and aeroplane. Ah. Mm. Uh. Hey. There's an aeroplane. All right, somebody get this idiot on the stand. <laughs> Court will now reconvene. Miss von Garma, which where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gall ga gallery. Sus suspicious behavior. He was sketching something very intensely. It's you, wasn't it? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? I keep forgetting the judge. He drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious whip. Hmm. Hey, that's you! That's you, actually! Ah! <laughs> anyway, it's time to drag this excuse for an artist before the court. Loris Donin. I hope you're ready. Get in here. I hate to say this, Francisca. You are oh, this no. type. <laughs> yeah. But it would seem that the, it would seem that whip is going to see plenty more use today. Oh Did you hear that? <laughs> Immediately. Your sketch is in contempt of this court. <laughs> you tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you to your uh, hand you your, 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 your Subpoena. Subpoena. Why do they been fetching out of training the mountains out of the mountains? I only came into the city because I ran out of green paint! Well, to use the term of the color, Lady. Shut up, Larry. Larry. Is that correct, Lunar? It's fucking this... green. Y yes, that is. <laughs> I'm on my way to the region. This. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Oh, Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. See, mine went just went to one short day in the Emerald City. <laughs> oh. Wicked. This isn't an art store now, is it? I know! I just graduated in high, okay? Look! Art's all about working in the field, isn't it? Working in the fields? 
I presume he wanted to say field work. I hope. That, that's it. Thanks, buddy. I'm kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train wreck of a sentence. Yeah. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. I know. So see, I've got nothing to do with this child at all. I expect all your faces to be red when you realize this mistake. Bright red, or should I say, crimson? <laughs> ah, oh god my god! Damn it. We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> oh, I hate Jay, that. Jay, why are you Larry? Why stop being Larry? You did this to me. Oh, I'm a mom. Give me all, mama. Stop your pathetic <laughs> blabbing and testify like a man. Refrain from whipping me, Miss Von Karma. Cross cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Ah, uh, that is a hockey joke. Very good. It is. Witness, that was all your false testimony. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is too much for me. So, how look are we gonna get in the last half hour with Larry on the witness stand? God, <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to come back to him next time too. <laughs> I was uh, at the lounge out in the mountains looking up at all the stars at night. At least did you get his testimony. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but. Uh... I didn't see a snowmobile. I didn't see anyone on the bridge that I that, that either. Gomez, are they brothers? Is it ever confirmed? I don't recall that being a thing. I think they may have like the judge has other brothers that are also judges, but I don't know if him specifically is the brother. Hmm. Never mind, it's canon. All right. Okay. Brother from the mother. Bridge. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I am all alone now. I'm tired, Please don't look at me like that. Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. But <laughs> you, buddy, nothing but a small, worthless man, aren't I? And why was I asked for my name and occupation or anything else? Because no one cares. Miss Sarah Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. I did that! He's recently been the cause of numerous incidents. I think he's finally realized for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been for other, to other people. That's right! I'm behind everything! Every case! Ha ha! I'm oh. mastermind. Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you internally unhappy! Well then, let us proceed with the cross-examination, I guess. With no touching, thank you. We can delve into all the details at a later time. No touching. No touching. By the way, despite what happens here, you are definitely going to jail. But... but why? Jail. Just look at, just look at yourself. Guilty. Is it the monkey? It's well. That's part of it. That's for no. sure. It doesn't. The monkey just doesn't help. No. no. Say. Hold it. <laughs> 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 Whatever is the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? This <laughs> one single statement is so full of contradictions. For a moment there, I thought I was going to collapse. Eh? Mm. We could go back to search for a bikini, I suppose. So, witness? Any ideas as to where these contradictions in your testimony lie? Hey, Depending hey. on your answer, I may oh, yeah. stay my whip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, give me a minute. Um, well, it was snowing that night, so I couldn't possibly have seen the stars. That road, or that rundown shack is hardly a lodge, is it? And even if the stars could be seen, was it like I was uh, there to look at them, right? Edgy? See? <laughs> you can do it if you try. <laughs> there is only one issue here. The whip! 
That's an issue for you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> what you saw at Dusky Bridge. I love Edgeworth just done with Larry's shit for <laughs> all eternity with that one frame. A number of times, how many? Maybe five times? I went once every 20 minutes. Which means uh -huh. you spent almost two hours at Heavenly Hall that night? Oh, you bet! Real love is about waiting for your heart in your hands! I move to kick the witness around the courtroom like a hacky sack, love you say. Why? <laughs> it was this man's intention to summon the defendant to the small shack. Using this blackmail letter. It's not a blackmail letter! Blackmail! Uh oh. Mm. No, no! It was simply a. <laughs> You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for, for a whimpering whining wuss of a witness! I'm not a fool! That's a good line. So, what did you say? I hope for your sake it what you saw a snowmobile. You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for a whimpering whining wuss of a witness, eh? Um. Well, let's see. Being called those names doesn't seem to bother him at all. Larry, you really didn't see it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Don't need to hit your desk. I can hear you. I didn't see it. I didn't see a snowmobile. Larry, say Edgy? snowmobile for me, please. S snowmobile. If you truly have nothing to hide. And why are you stammering like you just flew over a cuckoo's nest? I don't know! Don't ask me! Seems I need to start from a more obvious contradiction. Which I can blow that will finally get him to spill the beans. 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 Hey, sir. <laughs> you didn't meet anyone. That's right, because I've got nothing to do with this! And I'm just here to buy some Viridian paint, okay? Come on, I expect to see those Crimson Lake faces now! Hmm... It would appear that simply pressing him is not going to be enough, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. Eh? It seems that he's going to claim to have nothing to do with this to the end. I don't want this guy to cost us any more time. And just slice through his obvious contradictions and keep things moving along. Probably this. Also, oh, Edgy, isn't the, the cuckoo the one that they put the bird in the other nest? And that one murders the other birds, and they push them out of the nest, buzz on them to the ground. So why would I go to the cuckoo um, next? Quite, quite enough out of you, witness. I think I know what bird you're talking about. I don't remember if it's a cuckoo. Ah! A cuckoo. It might be. And then the cuckoo. It is a cuckoo. Uh, that's... that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Cuckoos so, lay what? their eggs in other birds' nests. Yeah. But the other birds will take care of them. So who would care about a cuckoo nest? They just go to another nest! If I would even build a nest! I'm Larry. <laughs> I'm Larry! <laughs> yes, we know witness. Hello, witness. <laughs> okay, so do we have evidence that somebody that they walked there? Because it's we know that people walk to uh, the inner temple. Yes, look at the photo of the snowmobile. Let's see us a snowmobile. I think it might be this because he is stuttering. But I Weren't there footprints we should do something in else. the photo of the snowmobile as well? The 
This is the main or would gate. Those have, would those have been Wright's footprints, maybe? Maybe. That would make sense. Actually, not sure what to do here. Times I didn't see the snowmobile. This is snowmobile. Anyone at the bridge that might? Uh, that's bullshit. Wait, he saw Nick. Wait, yeah, we did. S he saw Nick at the bridge. So yes, the, the photo of the snowmobile with the footprint. Larry, that's such a dumb thing to lie about. Or just Nick's profile? Yeah, probably. Uh, uh, Either maybe, that yeah. or the photo. I'm saving. Try, try Nick. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Larry Butts. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. But, having realized just how much of a nuisance you've been, it could be considered a step in the right direction. Are you trying to console me? Certainly doesn't sound that way to me. Oh. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. Mm. Mm. Uh, totally putting this on me! Now then, let us talk uh, about uh, the uh, night uh, of the murder. Mr. Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened across a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts! Nefarious? That uh, he had to try me in the flesh. Hmm, listen carefully, witness. Doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain pretty, uh, pretty pathetic, you'll continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change! But, 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 why do you do that? Larry, what you need to change is your inner self. But for now, what you saw that night, testifying truthfully about this one issue, is all I need from you. Uh huh. Hey, I, uh, I think. I think I have finally woke up! Well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it! I will testify! Uh... Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. Shut up, witness! <laughs> I'll ask again. What did you see on the night of the murder? Damn. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been around 10.30 p.m. I was heading into my bed when a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window and Dusky Bridge was on fire. There was some thunder and... Then I went right away to check it out! That's when I ran in the nick! Mm. You certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the bridge after it caught on fire? It was like me after a three day stint chasing a goyle! Totally burnt out! Like, almost totally gone! I mean, trying to cross the burning remains was what caused Nick to fall! What did you say? Oh, don't worry, it's nothing life-threatening. He just caught a cold. In fire! 
I never know with that man if he should be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence your course examination. Check. Hold it! What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, I... Was busy, busy being excited, I guess. Mm. <laughs> excited? Dare I even ask? Yes. Oh. I set the meeting time at 10 p.m., right? But I couldn't wait, and I thought she might come early, too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up! I don't go picking my fond memories apart! Anyway, I was getting a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had, you know, lost her way. So, maybe 20 minutes or so, I went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't have anything else to do, so... I went back down to the shack to wait for her. This light was, of course. Lightning! Like a Like a bolt from the blue! <laughs> <laughs> or like a no. slap from Naomi, honestly! A big bada boom! Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada -bing. Bada -boom. Or a and little like that. Hot dogs, get your hot dogs. Eh, Tony! <laughs> That's more like a punch from a red! Winnie, did you actually see the lightning hit the bridge? Well, I was a bit startled by the flash of lights. Hold it. Seeing that, what did you do? What do you think? I was burning up, burning up as well, from the fire in my heart! And that's why you went to take a look at the bridge. Well, to be honest, it was freezing cold, so at first I thought, forget it, I'm not leaving my covers. But it pretty much stopped snowing. So, I don't know. Change my mind. Mm. Not sure I care for the forget it attitude you had at first witness. <laughs> Hold it. You said right away, but how exactly how, but exactly how long after the strike was that? The lightning fell and then the bridge caught on fire. Uh, maybe around five minutes. I mean, I suddenly thought they gotta go check this out. How far is this small shack when you were in front in front in from of the bridge? Is that what that said? You, you were in Oh I wanna uh, I wanna rewind. How exactly how small was mm. the small shack you were in from the bridge? Oh. How far was the shack from the bridge that you were in? Okay. The shack that you were in. Larry's shack. The shack for Larry. Oh. Hold on. Uh, well, it pretty much stopped snowing. I guess about a five minute walk. I don't think that was a typo. I think it's just an awkward sentence to read. Yeah, well, I, I thought it might yeah. have been a typo because there's been other typos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understandable. And how did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I had recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bone bonfire kids make uh, during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info? Do it. Larry, let me ask you one thing. Uh-huh. 
What is it, Edgy? With a serious face. Why didn't you call me one? Eh? What is that supposed to mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try to tell someone. There is a public uh -huh. phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Uh, well, of course I thought of doing that. Come on. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Uh, uh okay. Um, a reason. My reason. Uh, it isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone. I just didn't have time. Okay. Excuse me? Ah. Where's the are weather we... report? Are we cool? Lightning struck at 1045. Nick would have shown up like and... half an hour later <clears throat> at least. Something like that, yeah. Because he had walked there, that would take 50 minutes, and the bottom would oh, yeah. start around 11. Yeah, plus the walk, so we would have either like at 1130. claim to have arrived at the bridge at the same time as Wright? Uh, yeah. I thought I better tell someone about this. But then Nick came up yelling about murder. It totally made me forget about the bridge. The fire was pretty much out by then anyway. So there is a time gap. What's this feeling? I suddenly have a terrible case of unease. <laughs> it was That's after normal. contacting the police that Phoenix Wright fell from the bridge, correct? Yeah, that's... That's pretty much it, more or less. No. You told me about the burning bridge yesterday. There's still something that doesn't quite fit. Looks like, despite his change of heart, Blair still isn't telling us the whole truth. Didn't Nick tell Larry to call the police? He did. So no, the police were not contacted. Wait, he, he didn't do that? How did they know to come out then? Well, what, what Francisca just said was, uh, she said it was after the police had already been contacted that Nick went across, or tried to go across the bridge. Yeah. That's not oh. what happened. Did Iris call them? No. <sighs> but waiting struck at quarter to eleven. It says it would have been a, about ten thirty, which is a fine enough margin of error if he didn't wasn't keeping track of time. Like maybe a little early, but if he didn't have a watch, well, he would have because he was waiting for a specific. I mean, I'll let it slide. Right away, and he said it was like a five minute walk, so he got there within ten minutes. And Nick would have shown up like almost an hour after he says. Yeah, that's a pretty big time gap. Because he was woken up at like 10.30 to 10.45. And he, if he got there by... Uh, okay, so the weather report, probably? I think so. Yeah. Nice. Almost out of time. Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. Eh? What the hey, Edgy? You mean something like I'm some sort of alien? But your testimony is conclusively contradictory. The problem here is time. I've never been the best timekeeper, you know. The first three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Man, I'm terrible at those. This is much more simple. Eh? You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge. And immediately went to see what had happened. Is this correct? Yeah, well, I 
We're just about five minutes at first, but eh, more or less. I have the wet weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45 p.m. You say it takes less than five minutes from the, t from the shack to Dusky Bridge. Meaning you probably got there at around 11 p.m. Uh, sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act? <laughs> that is impossible. Eh? What do you mean? 11 p.m. is when the murder occurred in Hasakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there in the courtyard. There is no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I have an objection. You do? I do. Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry. I'm Larissa Wahoo! It has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11 p.m. As you say, yeah. The sister only said around a little. In which case, it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Miss Franziska von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. Yep, there is still no way that Wright could have been at the dusky bridge at 11 p.m. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have the bridge must have been burning until at least eleven fifteen p.m. Which means what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge while it was being consumed by the flames that night. In fact, he did not arrive at the scene until the he did not arrive on the scene until after the flames had died down. Larry. Hey. You arrived at the bridge at 11 p.m., but Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. I suggest you to stop hiding things and just tell us the whole truth. How then? What happened during these missing 15 minutes? Uh, I feel like I just got brutally woken up by a toilet splashback. Oh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Order! 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 No! <laughs> so, there is a missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix, Phoenix Wright. I hardly see that as much of a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all! Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes and there's a phone right next to it. Why, then, did you not report the accident? Ah. Uh, yes, witness. Why didn't you? Were you there simply to watch the bridge burn? I didn't start and, the fire. And therein lies the problem. For even after the bridge had burnt out, he was still there. Staring into space, this witness doesn't even attempt to fulfill his civic duty. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Ah, uh, but this is Larry we're talking about, and even he isn't capable of being so stupid. Which means there has to be a reason for his inaction. Um, edgy. I, I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Yeah. Just as I thought, you've been playing with us all this time. I no, no, I no. Listen, I, I'm gonna tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? I've wanted to hear heavy. it since I called you to the stand. Yes. Heavy. I may really die. Then say it. I give it a chance. Very well. I have a terribly bad feeling about this. However, let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth and nothing but the truth on next time. And next, we will hear that next, next time. time. That's a great time. Yeah. Which will be Wednesday. This yes. Wednesday. We get a one day break. Oh, <laughs> wow. thanks. Thanks for that. Rest the Larry voice.
I, no I leave, problem. I leave buddy. to do a show for like a week, and now I come back, and they're like, "Okay, every day, gotta do it." Let's go. What? <laughs> we are Ace Attorney Channel now. Nice. Yep. Let's go. No problem with that. Challenger Attorney TV. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, then tomorrow is. Yeah. We said this before. Demon Souls. Souls. Demon Souls. Or I'm gonna beat up Tatsuki. Yay. Have fun. Okay, so yes. It's totally uh, gonna work. Tomorrow, Saps is gonna beat up demons, uh, demon, demons and their souls. And then and the day after that, we're gonna continue learning what Larry saw. We'll yeah. see you then. It was crime. Bye. <laughs> Alright, good night, everybody. Good night, you. Foolish, foolish soup. <laughs>